have you ever wondered? We have been acknowledged that unemployment has changed from year to year because of some causes which can make it increase dramatically or had tremendous decrease. So, what is unemployment? Unemployment can be defined as people who are jobless but actively seeking for a job. It can be categorized into three, which are frictional, structural, and cyclical. Frictional unemployment is the time spent by a person in searching for a job or transferring to a new job. It included to those who graduated as the new entrant, those who are changing job, and those who are returning to the workforce. Structural unemployment can be defined when it is mismatch between skill that someone has and the skill demanded by the company. And cyclical unemployment is happen directly from the economy upturn and downturn. Normally, this type of unemployment will rise during the phase of recession. Each country has their own up and down on the economic rate based on what they have faced and what resources they have in the country. In this video, we will discuss about unemployment on three countries which are South Korea, Norway and China. In addition, there are some questions that will be discussed too. Firstly, why is unemployment rate in the country is high? Next, because of COVID-19 pandemic, is there any consequences happen? And lastly, is there any steps that took by the country in overcoming the problem to be in a stable rate? Why unemployment rate in Norway is high? Norway's unemployment rate shot up to the highest level since World War II as the economic shutdown brought on by the coronavirus sends the Nordic economy into shock. The Norwegian government announced emergency shutdowns of many public and private institutions in mid-March. However, Norway is a unique country which has a rather high level of participation rates and very low unemployment rate. It is because of the situation called tripartism a broad agreement among unions, employers and government to maintain a high level of coordination in wage bargaining. Because of COVID-19 pandemic, is there any consequences happen? As the seventh largest exporter of crude oil internationally, the collapse of the oil price inevitably has implications for government policy responses to the COVID-19 crisis. By mid-June, most of the lockdown restrictions have been lifted and activity has increased in line with the reopening of the economy. As a result of the pickup in economy, many of those temporarily let off are now back in their jobs. How the country overcome the problem to be in a stable rate? Norway issued stricter measures and instituted quarantine for those who entered the country and the government closed all kindergartens and schools, hairdressers, swimming pools and training centers, then all sporting and cultural events. Norway act quickly to stem the spread of the virus domestically and limit infection from abroad while increasing health service capacity. The policy emphasized quickly shift to concern about economic impacts, the need to increase strength both employees and employers and support specific industries such as domestic air travel. By 2020, China's population is 1.4 billion. This number has put China as the largest population in the world. Even though China has a huge population, it doesn't affect the unemployment rate in this country. China unemployment rate is typically stable with 3.62% in 2019. However, China also experienced economic problem that has affected the number of employed people which is in year 2009 with 4.3%. American bank crisis in 2008 have give a big impact to China since U.S. is number one imported country thus the declining in purchasing from U.S. caused the demand for China's product decline too. 10,000 workers laid off and 10 million migrant workers being forced to go home. COVID-19 began in Wuhan, China. Because of uncontrollable cases in China, China has been locked down started in Wuhan and all people need to stay inside and cannot go to work. Because of this situation, China's GDP dropped and result to higher unemployment rate which is 6% by April 2020. 
the government set out special funds to support and help urban and rural laborers to be employed. Using favorable succession policy, the government support the unemployed to realize self-employment or start up their own businesses. At the same time, encourage small and medium-sized enterprise to absorb the unemployed. Apart from that, why is the unemployment rate of the South Korea is high? The rapid rise of unemployment level caused by the new government policy which is mandating a higher minimum wage causing the employers to cut some jobs because of the rising cost of labour. As we know, South Korea is one of the developed countries and at the top of the International Federation of Robotics Robot Density List. The technology advancements in workplaces make people having difficulties to be hired. For instance, Lotte department stores has replaced many sales staff due to the automation. As South Koreans' devotion is more to learning, the unemployment rate rises as many young adults technically unemployed due to their decisions to remain in pursuing higher education level. According to the stars, South Korea's unemployment rate climbed high in October as the resurgence in the coronavirus pandemic added pressure on businesses. The seasonally adjusted unemployment rate rose to 4.2% in October from 3.9% in September. As mentioned on the Straits Times, the nation shed 421,000 jobs from a year ago. Jobs in the real estate industry contracted the most with a 13% decline. The hotel and restaurant sectors lost 227,000 jobs. Meanwhile, wholesale and retail businesses shed a 5.2% fall. South Korea overcome this issue to be in a stable rate as the government's job creation efforts saw a 11% increase in employment related to public, defense and social security administration, adding 123,000 positions. Thus, the latest jobs data reflect the slow pace of economic recovery. As machines become more and more efficient and perfect, so it will become clear that profession is the greatness of men. And efficient. No matter how clever or efficient automation appears, there will always be a need for human developers. Automation and AI will lift productivity and economic growth, but millions of people worldwide may need to switch occupation or upgrade skills. Some of the real world examples of automation in the workplace are self driving vehicle, customer support, and digital signatures. Due to the impact of COVID-19, on March 24, 2020, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis predicted that unemployment in the United States was about to skyrocket to a point higher than that which at the peak of Great Depression, 32%. So, what will happen in the future? The Office for National Statistics in the US predicted that the automation will replace the jobs of 1.5 million people. Will that be in the future? Sufficient economic growth, innovation, and investment, there can be enough future growth to offset the impact of automation. We will all need presentations for how our needs are organized and varied in the future, a world where the role and meaning of work start to shift. Businesses will be on the front lines of the workplace. With the changes, this will require them to both retool their business processes and reevaluate their talent, strategies, and workforce needs. Carefully considering which individuals are needed, which can be redeployed to other jobs, and where new talent may be required. Individuals too will need to be prepared for a rapidly evolving future of work, acquiring new skills that are in demand, and setting intuitions about the world work will be critical for their own well-being.